I hope that you'll have some fun with this. Uh, this right here, again, would be, oh, we can come in here fairly random. Oh, I better do it. Maybe I better do it larger or get you closer here, one or the other, huh? We can come in here and have some fun paying attention to the, uh, to the direction, but still uh, having some random, uh, you know, uh, drawing opportunity here. And, and just get used to the texture. Get used to what does it look like? Are you capturing the character of this? And then uh, uh, you can go ahead and either draw in with the pencil you know, you, the, the value, or you can come in with your brush. As long as we have some very pronounced uh, texture, the brush works pretty good, just like the on the, uh, the hair. It casts some of that extra value into this area, so we don't have to spend so much time drawing. On the other hand, if you're going to draw, let me create a little bit more here, maybe a little bit more random, because maybe some of the gaps are closed a little bit more. And... Uh, and I'm just kind of scribbling in here and going uh, all different directions so I don't have lines that I'm ending up by having to fight because all these shadows will vary, all of the highlights will vary, all of the shapes will vary, none of them will be the same. And so I can still use somewhat of a tapered stroke, but I sometimes, this is one of the opportunities I have to kind of drag my, my pencil through and just doodle. That's all I'm doing. Just kind of doodling in some spaces. Get, get it random and yet uniform at the same time. Now when I'm going to do my pencil to put value across, I am going to uh, go across my detail. And this is where practicing that tapered stroke, practicing that patch, the uh, sphere, all those things are going to help you so that you don't end up by creating a grid. Because what I want to do is I want to go across my detail, and when I do that, it maintains this original detail I put down. And I can continue then quickly modifying it. I can modify it with my uh, pencil. I can come in there with my wonderful kneaded eraser and pick out just a little variance here and there. That point works out so well. Uh, that uh, because again, even though it's a very pointed part of my eraser, it still vignettes it and blends it in. But this is a great way, you know, to uh, prepare it for not only picking this out and now putting some dimension in some of these, uh, you know, little facets. But I can keep going back and forth with my pencil. I can do some things that are very general. Yet I can come back in there and do some things. Uh, as I see the balance starting to happen and, and what is going to uh, really convey the material the best, uh, I may not have to go very far with it. Maybe it can be very, uh, again, very general, but I can go back and forth. As soon as I do that, I can, if I didn't use it already, I can use my, my uh, brush and I can cast some of that extra value in there and I can come right back in and take out a brand new highlight. It may not be in exactly uh, the full space that I did before, but it helps me start centralizing that uh, highlight down to where it is the ultimate reflection. I don't want anything to be flat, so it's better for me not to come in with my eraser. I, I can touch up as long as I go back and forth, but I don't want to come in with my eraser and just erase a, a, a clean part out of here because it would tend to be flat. But I can come back in now and I can also put more value in there by brushing it. And this will give me the opportunity to take a more pinpointed area out so that I can have some variance within those. Now, contrast is going to be important, but you don't want to have these things be so uniform that you start seeing in between every one of these in the same way. You see there's a randomness. And try not to get it too black. It's very difficult when I'm printing things out to get them uh, to not show something very, very dark. I, again, would not want to go with black. Black, I think, destroys it almost every time. Even in between the arms where it goes into the darkest place, you can get fairly dark in there, but allow yourself some value left so that you can continue suggesting that there is a deeper part of the shadow. It's going to help you have that 3D effect 
if you can follow your detail into the shadows and not have to fight a flat value, uh, something you can't get any darker.